Good evening. Welcome to this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show. Tonight's topic is food contamination and foodborne illness prevention. Now, I'm bringing this topic up because I have worked in the restaurant industry and I've seen some horrible food handling procedures and I've also seen irresponsible customers and employees go in and out of the bathroom without washing their hands and putting on their gloves. And they must understand that if you are sick, you're going to pass your germs to someone else and then they become sick. And if you don't utilize the proper sanitation procedures, well, you're going to affect other people who come in to your establishment. And that not only includes customers, but your coworkers as well. So, there are four reasons why there is foodborne illnesses. First and foremost, it's inadequate hand washing. Then you have cross contamination, storage and cooking temperatures, contamination of food by animal waste. Now, when you get into the hand washing, you have what they call pathogens, they can be introduced into food from infected humans who handle food without thoroughly washing their hands. Now these pathogens are thus transferred from trace amounts of fecal matter that are presented or present on your hands and they're going to be transferred to food. In other words, when you come from the bathroom, particularly the stall, and you don't wash your hands, well, the trace of fecal matter that's on your hands is going to be passed onto your food or onto the food that you will be serving customers. Therefore, there's going to be a chance where a customer is going to come up with a foodborne illness. So, you must properly wash your hands and sanitize your hands. And every restaurant and even other work establishments are installing sanitizing dispensers because you must continually wash your hands when you're handling food. Second on the list is cross-contamination. and That's when food and kitchen tools and surfaces may become contaminated from raw food products. And we talk about meat and poultry. In other words, meat and poultry basically bleed. And that blood can get into or onto the counter surface and if you're using that surface from raw food and then you're cutting on that surface with vegetables there's a chance your food will be contaminated. Microbes can be transferred from one food to another by using the same knife, cutting board or other utensil without washing the surface or utensil in between uses. Also, food that is fully cooked can be recontaminated if it touches other raw foods or drippings from raw foods that contain pathogens. Cross-contamination's definition, and I want you all to hear this, is the physical movement or transfer of harmful bacteria from one person, object, or place to another. Again, cross-contamination is the physical movement or transfer of harmful bacteria from one person, object, or place to another. And that moves us to the third breakdown of a topic known as storage and cooking temperatures. Now many pathogens need to multiply to a larger number before enough are presented in food to cause disease. Now in general, refrigeration or freezing virtually alleviates any bacteria from growing. Now, food is heated sufficiently. Parasites, viruses, and most bacteria are killed. Now, usually when you put something in the freezer, it's basically, or refrigerator, or refrigerated, temperature is basically 40 to 45 degrees. Now, when it comes to cooking, there's a zone known as the danger zone, and that's when you have a temperature between 45 and 140 degrees. 
when food is at that temperature, there's a chance that it will spoil. And if you eat spoiled food, you become contaminated. Now, food should be cooked between 165 and 180 degrees. All temperatures are on the Fahrenheit scale. So, basically, temperatures do affect the food we eat. Because, again, we're not animals. Our digestive system is different. See, animals can eat raw food and blood. Our system isn't designed for that. So we must cook our food to the proper temperatures. And we must store our food correctly as well. When I worked in the restaurant industry, I used to see chicken and poultry stored on top of lettuce and other dairy products. And what would happen, the pathogens would drip onto the cheese or onto the lettuce and when that happens, there's a chance that the lettuce and the cheese will become contaminated. Also, with chicken, you get botulism. Individuals don't understand that these diseases can make people very sick and your establishment will get sued. I mean, I remember, and this has nothing to do with the topic, but an older lady in the 90s got a cup of coffee, set it in between her legs. Knew the coffee was hot, but won a $10 million lawsuit from McDonald's. What I'm telling all the restauranteurs and the newly hospitality personnel who want to work in the food service industry, you must take sanitation and safety very, very seriously. And you must understand this fourth term, contamination of food by animal waste. And that's usually when meat and poultry may become contaminated during slaughter by small amounts of intestinal contents. Again, if you're cutting pig, most of us cook pig intestines called chitlins. This is why you clean the chitlins before you eat the chitlins because there is content inside the pig intestines that can make you sick. Also, fresh fruits and vegetables can be contaminated if they are washed with water that is contaminated by animal manure or human sewage. That is a no-brainer. You do not want to wash your fruits and vegetables in dirty water, or if they have any manure on them. Now, this would be not in a food establishment, but on a farm, because farmers actually grow their food before they ship it or sell it. So, at any rate, you must take all the precautions when it comes to handling food, because you want to keep your patrons coming back to your establishment. So, cleanliness is very, very important, and it's also professional. And anybody handling food, working in the restaurant industry, should get what we call a serve safe certification and sanitation and safety. That's just the test you take. You pass the test, you get certified. And the knowledge exam has a lot of the principles that you are going to need if you're going to work with food handling. Now, also, I mentioned, if you're working on a cooking line, make sure you have your rubber gloves on or your plastic gloves. And you have to constantly change gloves because they get dirty as the day goes along. And you're on your feet for a long period of time. And if you have long hair, make sure you tie your hair up and put a hair net on. I don't know how many times I've heard people complain that they had hair in their food. And I've even had hair in my food as well. Also, make sure you utilize proper hygiene. There's nothing worse than going into a restaurant where somebody hasn't taken a bath. What happens is you're getting germs from that person 
particularly if they've been sick as well, and they pass them to the next person that you're working with. So again, you must take sanitation and safety very serious if you are going to reduce the amount of foodborne illnesses in the food service industry. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show for this evening, Friday, January 20th, 2017. You can tune in to the 411 Talk Zone radio show every Monday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Blog Talk Radio. Guest call in number is 215 383 5785. And if you like my videos, please share and subscribe to the 401 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube so I can continue to give you quality information for educational purposes from a professional and mature perspective. Now, on this channel, I don't engage. And any of the social or emotional or debatable topics, nor do I participate in drama or unnecessary bickering. This channel is exclusively for an audience who's interested in learning business, education, and careers, and occasionally I will do some political news. But what I'm here to do is provide you with the tools so you can go out in the real world and understand how the system of the real world works. So it can help you go down the right path. We all make mistakes in life, but if you're given proper guidance, it will be a lot easier for you to make decisions. So on this channel, keep everything realistic and positive because knowledge is powerful. Also, if you have a business or topic that you would like for me to discuss on Blog Talk Radio or YouTube, please email me at lej6521 at gmail.com. And I got to send a shout out to Big Body Matt Coley. Get over to his channel, Big Body Trucking. Shout out to Q Wilson. Shout out to Brother B. Hack. Also, I like comments. Make sure that your comments are left in the comment section under the video. Your comments must be pithy, no bloviating, petty fogging, or filibustering if you wish to opine. And that's it for this video. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Remember, please be gentle and respectful to each other and have a wonderful and blessed night. Good night.